Colossians 1.27, we come together to study the Word of God and we read together. To whom God would make known what is the mercy, riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let us lift our hands together and declare that God is all glorious. He is all powerful and we give him the glory and the adoration forever. And he's the hope of glory. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We study the subject of hope. And χρειάζεστε οπτικοακουστική μέθοδο. And χρειάζεστε μετάφραση στα ελληνικά. Παρακαλώ ζητήστε ακουστικά. Για την επόμενη μισή ώρα περίπου. Colossians 1.27 to whom would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. So the Lord is telling us that there is greater glory than what we, than what we have already experienced. And that glory is to be shared in his temple, in his gathering place, and individually in our lives. And this greater glory is called a mystery. Of this, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And as you said many times, Christ in me will benefit me and Christ in you will benefit you. You cannot be benefited by anybody else's opening of the heart or open of the mouth to praise the Lord. Amen. So, Christ himself is called the hope of glory. And we ask the question, is there any hope in this hopeless world? Absolutely none. Things will not go better. Things will grow much worse. But again, we have to separate the dispensations. Namely, for what period of economy of dispensation God is speaking about? And to what people, to who is he talking about? And how many of you remember the house of Israel, the tribes of Israel, the people of God that remained in Egypt under bondage for so many years and yet God gave them a special grace to go through. Amen? How many of you remember the land, piece of land that God had already provided from even from the beginning of the world? The Lord had this escape program, this rescue program to rescue his people even through the most difficult times. And the piece of land was called Goshen. Do you remember that? So everywhere there was darkness. But in the land of Goshen, there was light. So this is a parallel of the church today. We shouldn't grow weary because things are going from bad to worse neither should be should we be worldly optimistic because people say speak positive so that things will go better no things will grow worse they worry about a global warming but as somebody said there is going to be a global melting 
The Bible says the heavens and this earth will pass away with a whistling sound. There is going to be a meltdown of everything. We cannot be optimistic about this world, but we are absolutely convinced and live by faith for the world to come. So we do live by faith today and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And we should continue this way until the Lord Jesus comes back. Amen. Hallelujah. So when I say there is no hope in this world, don't be preoccupied with the evils that are coming in this world. Yes, there is a third world coming soon. But we are not to worry. Because God, in the same way that he had already provided a plan of rescue for his people Israel, so did he plan a place and a means of rescue for his people. And it's called the rapture of the church. A rescuer always rescues in a violent way. He is not gentle with the one he is going to rescue. And if you know anything about rescuing a drow somebody who drowns, a drowning person, you don't just pat him in the back. You take him with a headlock like this and pull him away because otherwise he will pull you down forcefully. Amen? But greater is he who lives in us than he who lives in the world. Any hope in this world? Absolutely none. Any hope in this world? No. Any hope in the Lord? Yes. And I promise to you to analyze, take the word LPs, which is found in the verse we just read, Colossians 1.27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. You see, the Gentiles... And the Gentile people didn't have any hope. You see, the Gentiles didn't have any hope. Why? Because they didn't have a covenant. Little David, a teenage David, made his way to fight with the greatest of warriors called Goliath. And he realized there was no hope he would ever beat down this huge man that was a very, uh, a very learned warrior, a veteran warrior. And we know that David, by the grace of the Lord, he had already killed a bear, a lion, and anything that attacked his sheep. But when he faced Goliath, he said, you come in your own strength, in your own power. That is why in the Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ, we teach you, never say, I am strong. Let nobody confuse you with God's strength. Let nobody confuse you and me, the weak ones, weak ones, with a strong one that lives in us. Amen? In fact, the only thing we can do is to limit God if we try to exercise any strength. But if we exercise faith, then he exercises strength. Did you listen to this? If you exercise faith, he exercises power. Did you hear this? If you exercise and go by faith, he will bring down his glory and his presence. So, separate the truth, the two. I am weak of the weakest ones, but the one who lives in me is the strongest of all. 
And he is the almighty God. He is strong. Amen. And my hope is in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's where I get my strength from. That's where I get my encouragement from. From the blood of Christ. From the name of Jesus. From God my Father. Exercising faith and grace by the enablement of the Holy Spirit that lives in me and lives in you. The Greek word is the word elpis. But I want you to uh, make known to you two more words that is in Hebrew, the equivalent of elpis. Everybody knows elpis. And let me for once more say that el, uh, elpis or hope is a totally different kind of the hope of the world. When the world say, I hope, they mean is, it is something that has no uh, basis, foundation, or a reason of, for assurance. It's just a hope. It's a wishful thinking as we say it. Even in psychology they use this term. Or self-fulfilling prophecies. They try to impose on themselves. Again, besides theology, they use that in psychology. So you see, this world is trying to create an image, a fake image, a utopia that doesn't exist. You go to a psychologist. They say, well, if you feel good about it, just do it. If it makes, I believe in Jesus. Well, I spoke to my psychologist and he accepted it. Yeah, I spoke, my wife and I and two of our sisters, we spoke to the wife of the president in the president's palace. Not this one, the previous one. And everything was so good that something annoyed me. She accepted everything we said. We prayed. Then the second time we saw her, I declared to her that nobody is saved by works. For as soon as I said that, she immediately turned the whole discussion around. And she looked so obviously annoyed by us not being so moved by the works of her and her husband and her husband's party, political party. But you see, that's why we have to face everybody with the Holy God. Not just tell them about hope. Not just tell them about uh, heaven. Before you do, make sure they have been faced with the real hell, eternal hell, burning hell. Then they will realize the value of heaven. Before you give any hope, biblical hope, to anybody outside, show them the hopelessness, the fatherlessness in this world. So we separate the two. Everybody will say, oh, it's good to speak positively. But it's not that we are not optimistic. Because optimism is creating a human utopia that you wished it came true. Sometimes we know it will not come. But we busy ourselves and our minds with positive thoughts to avoid reality. It's like an ostrich that buries its head in the dirt not to see reality yes there is hopelessness in this world yes the hope of this world is fake and counterfeit it's just wishful thinking and it's not biblical then we give them the biblical hope what's the biblical hope in a way business now faith is the hope 
of those that have been persuaded. You see, hope is the is the is is like a making sure and making sure you are convinced the word of God is real. That's hope, biblical hope. Faith needs hope to stand on. Without hope, there is no faith. Listen to the difference. Faith is in God. Faith is in Christ. Faith is in the Holy Spirit. Faith is in the written word of God, our final authority. But hope is not in anything else than other than the person of Jesus Christ. In fact, our hope is not a thought, a positive thought for a positive outcome. Our hope has a name and its name is Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ is our hope. God himself is our hope. It's not a hope in the abstract. It, it's a hope in reality so tangible you can experience it. But don't try to give hope to the hopeless people. Let them realize how hopeless they are unless they trust the true hope. Jesus Christ in me will benefit me and you have to receive Jesus in you to benefit you. So the Greek word LPs shows, tell me something that it shows. Some of you or most of you are Greek. So what, what LPs means? Looking forward. Prosdokia. Amen. Expectation. And let us see the two. So the Greek word is LPs. And two equivalent in Greek is Yahal. Which means wait. In a general meaning. Yahal. And the second word is Kava. Kava. Now I'm going to explain these two words. Before we see them. In, in the word, yahal means wait in its general meaning. Wait. Hope makes you being able to wait. How many of you are more impatient than me? Nobody. I knew that. How many of you are a little bit impatient? Nobody. So you don't need this preaching. I'll preach to these people right there. All of us tend to be impatient, especially in sensitive areas of our lives and in sensitive times of danger, of an attack, of a sickness, or anything like that, anything evil. But thank God we have hope. And this hope is Jesus Christ in us. And he is the hope of glory. It's a glorious hope. It's not a wishy-washy, wishful thinking, self-fulfilling prophecy hope. It's a real hope. The real person of Jesus Christ. Amen. So may hope makes us wait. Patiently. Because we know there has to come an outcome. I think it's in 2 Corinthians 13, 10, where it says, there is not a temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. In other words, every temptation in this world is common to man. It's on the human level. But God will bring the outcome with a temptation. The temptation comes, remember, it's on a human level. T temptation comes, well, at the same time, the Lord Jesus comes. 
Amen. Our personal help comes. Jesus Christ. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But praise God, God will bring the outcome with the temptation. Temptation comes from the devil, the enemy, and the outcome, the solution to the problem comes, the healing, the recovering, whatever we need comes from the Lord. That's why asking things apart from the person of God is like new age movement we have to make it very 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 personal we don't wait or expect anything from santa claus every good gift comes from above from the father of uh, father of lights amen he is the one who brings every good and perfect gift to us. Every outcome. Is that a problem? Solution comes. I've taken psychology. We took psychology. We know about these things. We know that in psychology, the psychologist is supposed to help you find and diagnose the problem. And then he lets you solve it. His job is to make you, encourage you to find the solution. But this biblical hope is that we see a problem, there is also a solution. The world is going from bad to worse. Thank God we have the hope of glory. Jesus will rescue us. Yes, there is going to be a third world war. It's written. Amen. Psalms 83, Ezekiel 38, 39. I'm talking about chapters, whole chapters. It's coming. But Jesus is coming too. My hope of glory is coming also. Who is Jesus Christ? The hope of glory. Colossians 3, 3. And our lives are hidden with Christ. Deep in God. Verse 4. And when he appears. You shall appear with him. In glory. Isn't that powerful? He's the hope of glory. When he appears. He will appear in glory. He, uh, first time he comes. He will appear in glory to his saints. Listen to the difference between. The rapture. And the second coming, the Ftera Barusia. The rapture, in the rapture, Jesus Christ, the Lord, our Lord, is coming for his church. Listen to the difference now with the, the Ftera Barusia, second coming. In Revelation 19, 11 through 16. In the second coming, in the, the Ftera Barusia, he is coming not for his church, but with his church. Again. With much glory, read Matthew 24, 25. I'm referring to whole chapters. In much glory, in much glory, in much glory. And we should give him much glory. Praise the Lord. So hope, Yahal, will make you wait for the outcome, for the solution, for the healing, for the deliverance. Ziotheos kezipsichimo. My God lives, and so does my soul. Amen. The second word is kava, and it means relaxing, releasing, and waiting in a living hope. I'm saying this again. Kava, with Q, pronounced like Q. Kava means relaxing, releasing, and waiting in a living hope. But the importance of this word, okay, the depth of this word, is it okay to expound on the word of God? Amen. King James Bible is the Holy Bible. It's the preserved word of God. When I have, a, when I have questions, I go back to my final authority, the King James Bible, which is the preserved word of God. And I don't say, well, it's not a good translation. Don't say that about the King James Bible. That's the preserved word, word of God. 
Some say, you'll hear preachers say, well, King James didn't write it the right way. No, 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 no. It's a good thing to have this assurance. We have a final authority. If it's between me and the Bible, I'll draw back and I'll say, okay. It's the word of God that holds the truth. So it's not about never doubting the written word of God, the Holy Bible, but you can expound in the original languages. Amen? Greek and Hebrew. Now, our final authority is not the Greek and Hebrew, even though it was written in them. What, what's, why? What's the reason? Because nobody has them. Nobody has the autographs, not the manuscripts. Nobody has the manuscripts. And between them, even the Texas receptors, there are differences. And there are about 10 of them or so. So it's not your opinion. I think, and my opinion is, no. This is the end of all antilogia, of all debate, of all argument. I go back to the King James Bible, the word of God, the preserved word of God, and I say, this is it. Amen? But it's okay to go in depth in the original languages. It's not by accident they were written in Hebrew and Greek. So let's trust the written word of God, the King James Bible. We say this out of necessity. In psychology, they use the term necessity in philosophy too. A necessity being because they say in order for beings to be, there has to be a necessity being. So this is... A necessary being. This is a necessary being. It's the word of God. Because that's our final authority. When I say something, we go in depth. Yahal, my hope, makes me wait. And if I wait, I know in whom I wait. I'm reminding you of Philippians 1.6. Being confident in this very thing. That he that started a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And 2 Timothy 1.12 He is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Against that day. Until that day. Being confident. Being confident. In this very thing. About seven words. Is there any assurance that he has started a good work? First of all, has he started a good work? Has he started a good work in you? In me? Then there is a reason to rejoice for that. If he had started it, he is the author and the finisher of my faith. Amen? So Kava makes it a little bit deeper because it means relaxing, releasing, and waiting in a living hope. It comes from the word kav in Hebrew, which means, literally means rope. So when you have a stretched rope, very stretched, you feel the tense, the tension. But, okay, let's take it on the positive biblical side. You know somebody is fighting for you. Amen? Who can tell me what Israel means? El Yisra. God will fight for me. God will fight for Israel and God will fight for his church. My father is greater than any other father. I'm not fatherless. I'm full of the fatherhood of God. So, and then somebody's fighting for me. And then when their robe is broken, there is such a release, such a relaxation. And this comes with the rapture of the church. The hope of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yahal means to be patient. To hope. Kava means to bind together. To collect. It means also to expect. There is a tension. The rope is very stretched. 
but the outcome is positive the outcome is godly the outcome is biblical in the book of psalms alone we find the word hope in the form of yahal and kava more than 40 times and i close quickly with these verses just one verse psalm 39 verse 7 and now lord psalms 39 verse 7 and now lord what wait i for my hope is in thee listen to the hebrew that is using both of these words and now lord what i wait for what kava i for what i wait for for my hope yahal my yahal is in thee and we'll talk about it more next week Thank you, Father, for the preaching and the teaching of your holy word. And thank you that we are not without a father and we are not without a hope. My hope is Christ in me. And my hope, Kava Yachal, is in thee, oh my God. And everybody said,